Bob Saget's cause of death might not be determined for weeks, but law enforcement working the case sees signs pointing to a sudden medical emergency, specifically a heart attack or a stroke. I want to bring in Joseph Scott Morgan, a former senior investigator with the Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office. Uh, Joseph, thanks for coming on the show per usual. We appreciate having you on. This is a major development as so many people have been wondering what caused his death and now we have this. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's kind of standard that that you're going to have this kind of delay. They're really taking their time. I'd, I'd like to go back to the scene, though. Uh, we begin to consider the possibilities here. Uh, what we are hearing is that law enforcement arrived uh, where Mr. Saget was, and they determined that there was no signs of struggle or no signs of foul play, according to them. My big question is this. Uh, I think um, when they arrived, did they notify the medical examiner? And was there a medical examiner investigator that actually went to the scene? Because the police are limited in what they can do and what they recognize from an evidentiary standpoint as it applies to medical legal death investigation. You know, there's certain things that folks in my field look for relative to the body. And it's very important that you see an individual's body uh, in, in, in its pristine state as the body is found uh, relative to the surroundings and all these sorts of things. And also at the time to examine an individual's body is not once the body has left and has gone to a county facility, but it's at the scene, the initial scene where you do things like uh, check for any kind of signs of trauma so you can contextualize that at the scene. And also you look for what are referred to as postmortem changes. And this this helps us establish things like postmortem interval that a lot of people hear about uh, over the years. You hear about it in media and in TV and movies and this sort of things. And those are the changes surrounding the bodies. And those, those are measured in time, Daytona, so that you can get an idea, you know, does the information that we're hearing relative to when he was last seen, his activities prior to death, does it marry up with what uh, what the science is telling us relative to postmortem interval. So that's very important as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, as you probably heard yesterday, that 911 call was released and some of the other details as to uh, what the security guard found when they actually came into the room of Saget in that or uh, Orlando hotel room. They actually found his body lying face up in his bed. Uh, they found his left arm across his chest uh, and then his right arm lying right beside him, which has led some people to speculate about the possibility of a heart attack. Right. And I suppose that, uh, you know, people can extrapolate from that what they what they wish. I, I've, you know, over the course of my career in New Orleans and Atlanta, working as a medical legal death investigator, I've seen uh, uh, people in all states of repose, if you will, at, at, you know, following their death. So I don't know how much you can actually read into that. What's going to be significant is I would advise everyone uh, to pay very close attention to what the medical examiner uh, down in Orange County has to say relative to their findings from their initial examination. That is, what did they see physically? Uh, is there any anything to indicate that there's anything other than a natural death uh, that we're looking at here? And then what are they going to find in the toxicology? And I've had people that have reached out to me wanting to know, well, what does that mean? You know, because we hear about tox and all these sorts of things. You hear about it in every single case, particularly in high profile cases. Um, you know, what, what are they finding at a chemical level? And so the ME will run what's referred to as a standard panel. And that means that they're going to look for drugs of abuse. They're going to look for any types of drugs that say may, may be prescribed, see what those levels were. And this is the big, the big unknown here. We don't know a lot about his medical history as no, we probably shouldn't. I mean, he's a private citizen. He has, uh, if he has some kind of medical condition, that's something that the family would choose to release or not. But the medical examiner will have that information. And on balance, they'll examine all of that based upon what they saw at the scene. And of course, what they're going to see from a toxicological standpoint. And that's very important. And that can take several weeks, as been indicated in, uh, in the press releases. 
Yeah, we're hearing possibly uh, 10 to 12 weeks. We can dive a little bit more into that timeline there, but there has been reporting um, that Saget has had COVID-19 recently, and there's also uh, indications that some people suffer from blood clots with that. All of this, of course, speculation, but um, looking at this, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. That 10 to 12 week realm though, uh, is that pretty accurate? Do you think it could take less time? Well, it all depends on exactly what types of tests they're doing. You know, if, if they're looking for things like blood cultures and those sorts of things, that can take a, a bit more time. But for a standard panel, if you're talking about drugs of abuse and all these things that we normally look for, that's, that's a bit on the longest side, if you will. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's kind of surprising to hear that it would take that long to turn around. But keep in mind, you know, medical legal communities are beset by labor shortages and time elements and all these other things as well. So uh, it's, I don't guess it's beyond the realm of possibility that, you know, you kind of have to take a number and wait in line because there are a lot of other cases out there that are being processed uh, ahead of this case. And there are certainly cases uh, that are occurring uh, uh, behind this. So you have to take these cases one at a time. I'm sure that that uh, that office down there is uh, they're probably running at a very substantial clip relative to the number of deaths that occur. Most of the general public is not aware of how many deaths occur on a daily basis. You know, not everything that we handle is some kind of uh, homicide or suicide. We have many unexplained natural deaths and these things have to be looked at very, very carefully. They have to take their time and be very careful about the things that they say and things that they do moving forward. Right, absolutely, especially for someone who is so loved. Um, so people are gonna be watching yep. this story and they wanna know what comes next. So we'll keep our eyes on any of the results that come out of that toxicology report. Uh, Joseph Scott Morgan, thanks for being with us here on the show. Talk to you soon. You bet, Daytona, have a good day.